Hello and welcome to the episode 165 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Today, we get a long episode with lots of events. I'll tease you with a one-year driving suspension for breaking the speed limit, a Fab Four reunion, and a massive Paul McCartney day in Abbey Road. Let's begin with the 14th of June 1961 and the 75th night of the Beatles, with Pete Best still in the lineup, at the Top Ten Club for their ongoing residency in Hamburg, West Germany. Two years later, in 1963, the Beatles played the Tower Barroom in Wallasey for another stop of the NEMS Mercy Beach Showcase. For more information on this series of events, you might want to check episode 66 of What A Fab Day. In brief, these were nights in which Beatles manager and NEMS owner Brian Epstein showcased NEMS talents to the British public. The Beatles took part in a few of the nights to increase the appeal of the events. The night marked the last appearance of the Fabs at the Tower Barroom. After the show, Paul McCartney was stopped by the police for driving over the speed limit, an infraction that will cost him a fine and a one-year driving ban. The 14th of June 1964 began with a press conference that Ringo Starr gave with Brian Epstein at the Sydney airport, while waiting for a connection flight. Later on, he took a plane to Melbourne, and so did the remaining Beatles and his sub Jimmy Nicol, leaving Adelaide after two nights and four concerts. The Beatles reunited for the first time after Ringo's hospitalization on the 3rd of June, detailed in episode 154 of this very podcast. Needless to say, it was a joyful occasion. Outside their hotel, the usual scenes of Beatlemania madness. Hundreds of thousands of fans waiting in trepidation, army and navy troops called in to make sure peace and some resemblance of order were maintained, police escorts with hundreds of deployed agents, and over 50 people hospitalized for various injuries. The Fab Four were forced away from a first-floor window of the Southern Cross Hotel to calm everyone down. After that, the Beatles held a press conference with Jimmy Nicol, and then, without Nicol, the band hosted the party in their suites until 4 a.m. Nicol was free to return to England, having gained notoriety, a £500 fee, about £10,200 in 2020 money, plus expenses, and a gold watch with the inscription From the Beatles and Brian Epstein to Jimmy, with appreciation and gratitude etched on its back. All that for 12 days of work, 10 concerts and one TV special. Before moving on with the episode, I'd like to remind you to go check in www.simonmas.com support at the end of the show. On the webpage, you'll find the many ways in which you can support me and this podcast, allowing me to focus on creating more and better music-related content for you to enjoy. You can share the episode on your social medias, drop me a line about what you think about the show, offer constructive criticism, or a host of other things. Every little thing is more than welcomed. Thank you for being fab and making a difference. Let's open the recording session part of the episode with a Paul McCartney day on the 14th of June 1965. The Beatles reconvened on this date at the EMI Studios in Abbey Road, London, completing the basic track of three songs penned by their bass player. Starting at 2.30 pm, the band recorded I've Just Seen a Face in six takes, then I'm Down in seven, and then, after a break between 5.30 and 7.00 pm, Yesterday, featuring only Paul, in two attempts. Paul's vocals were re-recorded when a string quartet was overdubbed onto the basic track, on the 17th of June. Check out episode 168 of What A Fab Day for more info on that. But the procedure was completed without headphones, and so today's vocals couldn't be completely cancelled, creating an unintentional double-tracking effect. Much was said at the time about the fact that no other Beatle was on the song, 
with someone saying that the other three weren't even in the studio. In fact, at least George Harrison is mentioned by Beatles historian Mark Lewison as chatting in the session tapes, and so he was actually in the studio. In addition, the comments of Lennon and Starr about the song have always been nothing sort of enthusiastic, and there's no indication that this was an early attempt by McCartney to break free from the band. More Paul McCartney in 1966, with the start of the work on Here, There and Everywhere. Working as usual at the EMI Studios in Abbey Road, the Beatles attempted for three times to complete the rhythm track, reaching their goal with a perfect take on the fourth attempt. They then recorded the first few vocal overdubs, thus concluding the 7 pm to 2 am session. 1967. The Beatles were at the Olympic Sound Studios to record a basic track of All You Need Is Love, their original song that was meant to represent Britain in the first worldwide satellite broadcast to be held on the 25th of June. Between 10.30 pm and 3 am, with George Martin producing and Eddie Kramer engineering the session, the lads recorded 33 takes of the rhythm track of the song. John Lennon played the harpsichord, hired for the occasion for 10 guineas, about £190 in 2020 money. Paul McCartney played double bass and George Harrison a violin. Ringo Starr was on his drums. At 3 am, take 10 was reduced into a new take and this was mixed in mono. The whole process took an hour and the session ended at 4 am. Finally, on the 14th of June 1969, John Lennon and Yoko Ono gave two interviews. The first was to David Frost, filmed at the Intertel's Stonebridge Park Studios in Wimbledon. This was later aired in UK and USA for the David Frost Show, on the 10th of July, between 8.30 and 10 pm. The Lennons wished the Queen happy birthday, discussed the word peace, Bagism and their albums Unfinished Music No. 1 and 2 and The Nature of Art and Creation. Ono gave Frost an arty present, a box of smile, a box containing a small mirror designed to reflect the smile of whoever opened the box. The second interview the couple gave was to be broadcast by Radio Luxembourg on The David Christian Show between 7 and 10 pm on the 22nd of June. And that's it for today's episode. What a fab day will be on tomorrow for more stories about the four you love. Don't miss the fun. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.